Good morning. I'm Heather Keller. I'm the Legal Advocacy Director for Access York and Victim Assistance Center. Oh, I got a... I'm messing up already. <laughs> Here we go. See? Here I am. Um, <laughs> Access York Victim Assistance Center. We are programs of the YWCA. Um, Access York was a standalone nonprofit for about 30 years before we merged with YWCA. Um, Victim Assistance Center was a standalone uh, nonprofit for a few years less than that, I think. Um, they started a couple years following us, um, merged with the YWCA, and so now we are a comprehensive um, victim services center all under the umbrella of the YWCA. Um, just telling you about we are what you can see from these pictures is that we're really fun people. We love what we do. Um, this is actually from last year from the uh, Domestic Violence um, Awareness Month kickoff. And so what I'll talk a little bit more about and what other people have talked about is how much we thrive in the community and how much we need to work together to make these services happen for people. I'm trying to keep an eye on my time. <laughs> so what we do, we have... Um, as part of our programming, we have legal advocates and we have an attorney and a paralegal. Um, the legal advocates really sit down with individuals and provide legal options, looking at the big picture of what's going on. They are not attorneys, they can't give legal advice, they don't practice law, but they let victims of violence know what their rights are and what some of the opportunities that they may have might look like. We do assist them with the protection orders, um, which has now been expanded from just the protection from abuse order to the, um, the sexual violence protection order as well as the PFI, which is uh, protection from intimidation. I haven't gotten a whole lot of those just yet. It was just incorporated in the last um, couple of months in July, um, but we are working with those things huge part of what our victims advocates do is talk with folks about their safety planning. Um, as we all know, a, a protection from abuse order, whether it is um, an intimidation order, a sexual violence order, or a traditional protection from abuse order, is that it can only be part of a bigger safety plan. Um, and so our advocates really look at what can we put into place to make your life safer. Um, we do accompany victims to court when they go for their protection orders. We also accompany them when they have to testify um, in a criminal charge. If their abuser has been charged and they have to go um, as a victim of a crime, we'll go with them to the local district magistrates as well as to the Court of Common Pleas for trial, sentencing, all of those kinds of things. Um, one of the things, and I've been in this position for 10 years, one of the things that kept coming up was the lack of access to attorneys, um, which everyone here is talking about today. And so we had been applying for grants. Can we please get an attorney? Can we please fill this gap? What can we do? We were actually really fortunate to receive a, a two separate grants to hire a full-time attorney and paralegal. They handle um, civil legal needs of victims of sexual assault and or domestic violence. So what they do is very um, specialized in terms of who they can represent. However, they can do a whole range of legal needs. So sometimes that looks like filing for support, sometimes it looks like custody, divorce. Um, if MidPen for some reason is not available, it's a court date coming up quickly, we can sometimes scoot them in for the protection orders as well. Um, so we are really fortunate to have that at this point. And, and really what that's all about is providing the next step towards independence. Who do we serve? Well anyone and everyone in our community that is a victim of violent crime. Um, our clients look like you and I. Um, we even have the little animals up there because one of the huge things that people are worried about when they're talking about leaving, um, leaving their home, leaving their marriage, leaving their situation is what am I going to do with my pets. We partner with the um, SPCA to provide the animals with safe shelter while the family is in safe shelter as well. One of the most brilliant and wise things my mother ever told me when I was a child is you never know what goes on behind closed doors. So whatever's happening in those previous slides of happy families and all of that stuff, you really never know what's going on for someone in their home. And I think it's really important as we do this work to think about that, to always be thinking about that. Um, we have to come safety first, safety always. And so when we ask you, um, to refer people to our legal program, we ask you to refer them to our support services first. Refer them to Access York, refer them to this Victim Assistance Center. We need to put all of these things in place to make sure 
that they can be safe as they're moving on with addressing their legal needs. And then our staff will put in the referral for the attorney. Um, we have to stop victim blaming. This is always my plug. It's not her fault. Um, people make different decisions based on what's going on behind their closed doors. We don't always know that. And so if we can put judgment aside, refer them to get their safety planning that they need, and then we can address what their legal needs are as well. What we have found is that there is another way. There's always another way. Legal services are an important part of creating independence and a new life for people that are working towards something better for themselves and for their children. Uh, the power and control wheel, I can't spend a whole lot of time on that because I'm running out already. Um, but what we know is that domestic violence is not just about physical violence. It's not just about sexual violence. It's about financial control. It's about emotional control. All of the overlying dynamics of power and control are what influence someone to make the choices that they do. Um, no one's journey looks the same. And so oftentimes we have people saying, she needs a PFA, she needs to do this, you need to take her to court. Um, I'm not the judge of what your journey is going to look like. Everyone approaches it as they can, takes each step as they can. And so with our ability to provide comprehensive services that go along with the legal services, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, we offer options and support. We, um, I talked a little bit about the PFA process. I don't have time to get into what all of that looks like, but what I can tell you is that an advocate is going to be with that person every step of the way, no matter what that looks like. Our most important job is to let someone know what their options are, direct them to receiving those services, and support them through whatever it is that they choose to do. I talked a little bit about court accompaniment. Um, we work with the police departments, and I'm out of time. Um, the lethality assessment program is something that you've probably heard a lot about, and so we are working with uh, Safe Home and with PCADV to educate police departments and get them all on board to use the lethality assessment program. Um, we work with systems. We work um, with everyone in our community to make sure that we're all filling the gaps as best as we can, and that's a really important part of our work. Um, education and awareness, um, as in the second slide, I think it was, where we're out for a kickoff, you know, we're always out there trying to give a voice to people who typically have not had a voice. Um, we take a stand and provide, hopefully, hope and healing um, to the victims of violence in our community. This is all of our contact information. Um, if you have someone that you think might be in a domestic violence situation, um, might need some resources, including legal services, give us a call. We'll get them set up with an advocate and work on a comprehensive plan for their healing. Mary. <laughs>